and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Sun Wake of the Ravager. When we last left off, we had defeated Solarness and stopped his plans of world domination or whatever they were. Probably was that. And then we had talked to a couple NPCs around Hamilton Forest, such as Glade, who had returned to her people after recovering from a leg injury, and Dimitri, who we had told to go to the Veiled Alliance, though considering we weren't a member at the time, I don't know what we had told him. Mm -hmm. But then, after all that, we had returned back here to Tyr to hand in those documents to Arslan, who had shown us this entrance right here that leads into the Veiled Alliance headquarters, which we're going to go down in now. The stairs lead down into an underground building. Do you enter? Yes! Alright, here we go! Down we go! And do you have anything to say? <laughs> ah, of course not. Just growl away. Greetings. The Veiled Alliance welcomes you into our fold. I am Matthias Morthen, the leader of the cells here in Tyr. Arslan sent word that you were checking on the Templars. Have you any news of their doing? Z their doings! La. Learn to finish the sentence, damn it! And yes, we do! Matthias listens in grave silence as Atticus explains the situation with the Templars and the forces from Lord Thorax. I read about the city, but never once thought its people would venture from their valley in the Sea of Silt. Life preserve us! Tyr cannot hope to survive such a catastrophe. Already it is on the brink of anarchy! I knew we would face consequences for Kallik's death. But come, we must begin preparations for whatever they have in store for our beleaguered city. Tell me about this city, Ur Urdrax. Urdrax? Urdrax is a dreadful city in the middle of the Sea of Silt. Nothing but evil tales have ever come out of it. Now, it seems that evil has decided to spawn more than just stories. How does Kallik's death figure into this? Only in... Only in that when the Sorcerer King, Kallik, was slain in his pyramid, as he tried to transform into a dragon, a void was created in the power structure of Tyr. Kallik's evil was great, and I do not in the least mourn his demise, but it has had its price in the lawlessness of the streets, and now, the attention of the dragon! Ooh, I'm guessing that's the guy who we'd seen in the intro. Hmm, let's see, is there a place where I can rest? Of course, forgive my manners. I am all too anxious to hear what you've learned in the Templar's offices. A guest room awaits you in the first room to the west as you walk south down the main corridor. What are we going to do? Right now, we must prepare for the worst. Study our enemy and gather our strength. Talk to Aleka. She will give you the names of some of our contacts in Tyr. My strongest advice, however, is to do some research of your own on the workings of these Templars. Where can I do this research? We have archive and research rooms in the northeast corner of our headquarters. You are more than welcome to use them. Who is Alika? She is one who handles communication between the Veiled Alliance cells and takes care of all our day-to-day -day needs. Her office is just west of the entry hall. How are we going to stop the Draxons? I'm not sure yet. Certainly the Draxons have been unable to complete any plans they have. The answers to our problems will be found in one of my many books, Patience and Wisdom. These are the virtues that will lead us to victory. I will be in my private rooms to the northeast. You are welcome to come talk to me any time. And, well, here we go. Now let's go explore and see what we can find and talk to people. Yeah, I doubt there's going to be that much action here, but... Oh, hey, chests and bags. Can't forget the bags. Grab them. Gonna definitely grab all the containers I can. Okay, let's see. Do these things have anything? All right. Mm-hmm. Nope. And yes, but they're junk. Oh, well. Self-water. That's 100 ceramics. I know I could just do the thing with the... Oh, there's a red bag over there. I could just go ahead and sell bone maces all day, but 
I'd rather not. Okay, let's go ahead. Get Halton. Grab these chests, because I'm pretty sure these ones won't be all buggy. And... Mm -hmm, gonna go ahead and steal stuff straight off the bat while we're here. Because what kind of a... Uh, what kind of a party would we be? Now, can I open that? Oh, I can open this. Ooh! That's some coins. More coins. 100. Yes. 4,000 coins. We got a gem. Another gem. That's worth 1,000. And a single plus one arrow. Ah, keep that. Ooh! Purple chest. Grab it. Come on. Select it. Yoink! Man! If that game would let me. Okay, now let's see. Just go around stealing stuff, picking everything up. And there's a bag here. And there we go, got some more storage space. Didn't need to buy all those bags, but it's definitely a good thing to do, so. And we got some metal chain and some metal bone. Or metal bone? <laughs> no, that's not the case. Oh, we got 3,000 coins. And we got some gems here, which we're going to pile these on. Because don't want to have them all take up all the inventory space. And another blue gem. And 4,000 more coins. Jeez, these people are loaded. All right, put that there. And yeah, that's a sizable chunk, I guess. And I don't think I can take that bag on the shelf. No. If they're on shelves, they are not. At all obtainable. Anything in there? Nope, can't do that. And there is a lady that we will be talking to in a little bit. But I want to go ahead and... I definitely want to check out those archives. As you step into the meeting room, you see an intense woman, woman rallying her followers. The respect she invokes shows clearly in their faces. The time is... The time to act is now. We have hidden in the shadows long enough. Kalak has been dead for months. And what have we done with our freedom? Nothing! Romilla is right. Fear is our only enemy now. The common people what the common people want the defilers driven from the land as much as we do. All we must do is teach them the truth about our magic. But the people are not ready to accept magic in any form. Divulgence, if carried out, must be done slowly. Like the gathering of dew, one drop at a time until the bowl is full. Romilla turns and notices you in the doorway. She raises her hand and gestures to gestures to you. Here are the new alliance members. How do you stand on divulgence, friend? Let's see. What is divulgence? Well, that's pretty. That's pretty obvious. What it is? Take the fight of the enemy is kind of a bit of a reckless action. Caution, I'd say, is the best policy. And I'm pretty sure Selexat would say that. You have been talking to Matthias, I see. He's always ha he's always one to advise patience when action is always needed. What exactly is divulgence? Simply put, divulgence is the idea that we, the Alliance, should lift our veils and reveal to the public that we are wizards, that not all magic users are evil like the Defilers, this, we feel, can only strengthen us in our fight. What exactly are you fighting for? Look around you. Athos is a tortured world, where even breathing can be painful when the hot wind blows. Hot winds blow. Blech. Putting letters and putting them in the wrong places. We fight so a cool breeze will not be smothered with dust, so a spring can nourish life before it dries up. It is the defilers who make Athos like this, and it is to them we take the fight. Uh, sounds like a good way to get killed. Won't the people simply hunt you down? A righteous cause. How can I help? I appreciate the guile you showed in getting the information from the Templars. But now is not the time for secrecy. I think I know where these Draxons of yours are hiding. We must hit them soon and hit them hard. What does Matthias have to say about all this? Matthias wants to keep the Veiled Alliance a secret, secret society, and we respect his leadership. However, Matthias knows it is a changing world we live in, and that the debate over divulgence can only provide us with more options. Won't 
people simply hunt you down? They may. They see, they see the blasted land around them and know it was magic that caused the destruction. And they don't know... And what they don't know is only magic can heal Athos of its wounds. Is That is what, what we live and die for. It is time I was leaving. Goodbye. Very well. Come to my quarters later. They are straight down the corridor to the west. We can speak quietly there. Romilla and the other members speak among themselves for a few moments before the meeting breaks up. And there we go. So meet some more members of this society. And let's go ahead and explore a little bit more. And sucks it. Did you disappear? No, you didn't. Okay, and... Oh, bags. And people, which we're not going to talk to. I'm, 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 yoink. Thankfully, there's no consequences for taking these things, because they don't care, and it's not like they're scripted. It's not like Baldur's Gate, where if you were to take something that didn't belong to you, where it would get you in trouble if somebody were to see. Oy, oy, oy. Freaking facing guards when you're first level? I don't think so. Especially when it's just only a party of you. Oy, oy, oy. That can also go hand in hand with Icewind Dale, considering it's also like that. See anything in here? Oh yes, a plus one metal axe, a blue gem of the small variety, and some coins. Take those, and ooh, a tapestry. Wonder which one? Ooh, bookcase, use. Allure scans the book titles. All appear to scholarly works, some dull beyond endurance on Tears history and its envirious environs. A few, however, catch Allura's eye. Atricus and the Veiled Alliance. Allura picks up the book and thumbs through it until a paragraph catches her attention. Many tales have circulated about Atricus, the mage who led the Veiled Alliance for nearly three centuries. Holy crap, was he an elf? Some stories, st some stories say Atricus reigned... Atricus's reign was, in fact, a series of leaders who assumed his identity. Others claim he still lives today as a stone spire in the middle of the desert. Whatever the truth, Atricus con Atricus's contribution is undeniable. His knowledge of Kallak was uncanny and is the single most important factor in the success of the Veiled Alliance in Tyr. Uh, Alora puts the book back on the shelf. Let's read The Evil Underfoot. And she catches something that... Finds something that catches... Oh, this is a big one. The magnificent city of Tyr was built upon the decadent ruins of an ancient city which can still be entered in some places, which is the Undersorrows. Undoubtedly, our gracious king, Kallik, understands the reasoning for this. But for the average citizen, Under Tyr, as the ruins are called, or that, remains a source of great fear. Under Tyr attracts and gives refuge to the very things we have tried to eradicate in our fair city. Thieves, rebellious slaves, and the Veiled Alliance. There have been many reports of hideous monsters breeding in the ancient crypts and sewers. Tyrian citizens should watch for signs of underground activity and report them to the city guard. Yeah, we definitely know what kind of... Griblies wander down there. And Iron Will, Iron Wealth. And what did she pick up on? The iron mines of Tyr contain the largest known deposits of ore on Athos. Indeed, it is the mines which are the lifeblood of Tyr, providing the bulk of what city's wealth of that city's wealth. Not that it concerns Tyr's sorcerer king Kallak, but the mines ore is not extracted without a price paid in miners' lives. Many of the miners claim their claim the deaths are the result of a Hedgekin curse. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder if we'll ever encounter those. And there have been mysterious deaths reported on the levels below the crawls. Whatever the cause of those deaths may be, one thing is certain. Most deaths are caused by simple poisoning. Gas pervades many of the digs, and only the fool would venture into the mines without protection. Yeah, that's... kind of a... something that can happen. Freaking methane gas pockets and things like that. And, oh, look! Allura scans the book titles. Some some have strange names which mean nothing to her, while others are written in unfamiliar letters. All the books, however, seem to be about Kallik and the history of Tyr. Kallik, the Sorcerer King of Tyr. 
And what caught her eye this time? Great concerns have recently swept through the Templars of Tear over King Kallak's protection project, oh, project to build a massive ziggurat in the center of the city. True, the Tyrant of Tear, as Kallak is often called, has made Tear one of the most successful cities on Athos. However, it is no longer clear that the old wisdom of do what is good for King Kallak and you'll do what is good for Tear still holds true. It is clear now that his ziggurat was not built to protect the city from the dragon, as Kallak claimed, but serves some dark purpose known only to the king. Probably to transform himself into a dragon? What is clear is that Tyr will not survive if something is not done. Indeed, whispers of revolt have her been heard among the nobles and merchants. At the very, at the very least, they want Kallak to stop taking slaves from the mines so... Trade can resume, and someone's using the blunder. Great. My patron, a, te a Templar's tale. Alora takes the book and thumbs through it, until she finds an interesting page. More books! Oh, Jesus, it's gonna be quite the... quite the long breath. My entire life is devoted to our proud and magnificent king, and it is a life well spent. King Kallak is the embodiment of what Athos requires, a strong, direct ruler who brooks no half-measures in his subjects. After 1,000 years of efficient rule, one, can argue, one cannot argue with his success. I count myself privileged to serve him for my short lifetime, as should everybody, every one, from the basest slave to the richest noble. Yet Kallak's greatness does not end with his strength. His wisdom is boundless, as could be seen in the construction of the ziggurat. If his detractors would look Beyond the, the immediate hardships it causes, they would realize King Kallak, using the ziggurat to transform himself, transform himself into the mightiest king on Athos, soon all will kneel before my magnificent patron. Uh, of course, propaganda and that bullcrap. And Kallak's Pyramid of Death. And... Whoop. I was made one of Kallak's scribes for two years... Oh... I was made one of Kallax, King Kallax's scribes two years ago, which was fortunate since most slaves who can write are killed. I think the Templars were desperate for chroniclers and clerks to track the works on the King's ziggurat. What I witnessed in the ziggurat has made me regret my learning, or wish I had been killed instead of sent there. To say the ziggurat is evil is to say a jaguar is a kitten. King Kallak has built a ziggurat for the sole purpose of transforming himself into a dragon. The entire structure is a f structure is a focus for defiler magic, draining the life force of the dying slaves in the arena. The device which collects the life force, however, also collects the nightmares of those resting near them, with the troubling side effect of producing fairs. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder why there's so many that would come near there. Why there's so many of these buggers spawn. I, spoken, I spoke to another slave who said he was going to kill the Sorcerer King. However he intends to do so... However he intends to do so is beyond me, but I hope with all my heart that he succeeds. Surely Athos cannot survive another dragon king... king another dragon leeching its life. Hey. And here we got a dude, and we got a tapestry, which I'm gonna look into. Hello, let's go in. Yeah, you could probably guess that. The tapestry is, is woven with remarkable craftsmanship and depicts a surrealistic landscape, which Allura recognizes as a magical realm. At the edges of her senses, Allura also picks up the unmistakable stench of sewer lawns. Examining it closer, Allura's hand fades in and out as she touches the tapestry. Do you try entering it? Yes. And away we go! Whoosh! <sighs> Ah, even the good make mistakes. Perhaps they do not realize that a door open to one is open to all. Um, okay. And, uh-oh. It's been so long here. Please talk with me. I'm Alora. I'm Asquare, or what's left of them. They left me behind. Who left you behind? My adventuring compatriots. The riotous scum. How dare they leave me behind? After I saved them so many times, 
We came here all the way from Uruk. Where am I? This place is a hell. Endless centuries of aggravated torture. Won't someone save me? Save me from this unending gray dream! And can we talk to him again? It's too hideous, I can't watch! How did you die? Laura fails her charisma checks to calm a square. It was ghastly. I watched myself die here. My blood still stains the floor. What exactly killed you? Allura manages to use her charisma to calm a square. And we receive a little bit of experience for it. Nice. The gray things wouldn't leave until I died. What gray things? Also, that guy right there is twitching. It's as if I was dying again. What are those gray things? And she manages to do it and receive some experience. They're part... They're a part of your friend. That useless Shadow Ludwig calls them soul shards. They're part of your friend. That useless... Calls them... Okay, oh, I think he's gone a little crazy. How can I kill those soul shards? They're easy to kill, but they come back. They'll keep you... Com they'll keep coming back until you're paralyzed. Until your paralyzed friend is dead. Oh, God. And... Oh... One ends, another begins. All die and pay for their sins. Shut up, you idiot! Um, okay. And I'm guessing that's his body, which has a plus two stone dagger, which I'm gonna grab. And a thousand coins. And... Uh, who's the other shadow? He's mad, you know... He'll only get you in trouble. Really? Who is he? And... Yeah, good thing Alora has the high charisma. He is the king. Just like he said, his kingdom has seen better days, however. What kingdom does he rule? The kingdom of the undead. Who set him here, here as a trap? They sent him... They set him here... They set him here, of course. You know, the ones who want to kill us all- kill all of us! Why do they want us- why do they want to kill us? Why ask an elf if he's lying? They're killable, so if someone wants to kill us, it's a pain as the mouth on your face! I'm through with your mania! Save me from this unending great dream! Anything else to say? Uh... And- oh, well, it seems you can- Infinitely get things, get experience from him. Shut up, you idiot. Okay, well, let's move around, shall we? Something does happen. Shut up, you idiot. And, oh god, and yeah. Meet the soul shards. Oh dear. Let's freaking ah. Beat him up! Yeah, they're pretty tough. Frickin' level 14, oh god. Uh oh. That's bad. Now, there is a way of defeating them permanently, however. How is that? Well, it may not be apparent right now, but. What we need to do, once it reaches our turn, take one of these shards and put it in the chandelier, which instantly kills a soul shard. And... BAM! Take that! And another one! Yeah! Yeah, there is a way to... My kingdom bought of the boozy. Fresh food was brought to my tables in lavish banquets that would last four days. Yeah, you can talk to him. Which I'm going to do. Uh, this was young. Fresh and vibrant, she sucked in the soft sun like a flawless gem. Yeah, I think I'll go ahead and talk to this guy, but right now I'm going to go ahead and put another shard in to get rid of the soul shard there. Relatives and friends would travel for days to take part in the feast. That takes your turn. As Sancho says, the meals were as fine. 
as prestigious an honor to sit with me. I knew why they all came. They came to see the Chandelier of Ancestry. Such an amazing artifact. None could recall having heard of anything like it. Oh, tell me more about this ancest Chandelier of Ancestry. Okay. Anything more, King Ludwig? And then my end arrived, not brought by a rival, for I had only friends, but an accident. The chain holding the chandelier broke, crushing my body. Oh. And now the chandelier no longer waits till death to bring out your souls. It draws from the living and strikes out. Hmm. So shall it be as long as the chandelier is broken. Anything else to say? Oh, stop getting two turns in a row. Nope. But yeah, that's essentially what... Sh that's how you're supposed to figure out to... Go, oh, come on. That's how you're supposed to... Figure this out. The circle is unbroken. It awaits a new beginning. Those that can escape this circle and re-enter their own. Yeah, we kind of can't do that. And who just leveled up? I gotta say... Oh! Wow, Alora, you're slowed! Huh! Did you just level up? Did you level up? Oh, you're a level 12 cleric! So you now have some more... things, but... Well, let's go ahead and put the final shard in. Which fixes it. The remaining crystalline shards float back to the chandelier. One at a time, they, repl they replace themselves. Alora is suddenly released from the power of the chandelier. Ah, released from this everlasting tomb! Thank you! And... What do you have to say, dear king? The circle is broken. Your work shall be rewarded. Look on my dead body. You will find a shaft of crystal. It is sharper than a razor and stronger than any steel. Use it to forge a weapon. I must go now. Farewell. And farewell indeed, dear king. And I believe we have this crystal shard in our inventory? Where is it? The circle is broken. Your work shall be rewarded. Look on my dead body. You will find a shaft of crystal. It is sharper than a razor and stronger than any steel. Use it to forge a weapon. I must go now. Farewell. Ah, there we go. You've solved an ancient mystery and repaired the chandelier of ancestry. Each party member receives 20,000 experience points. And, oh, someone reached... Tenth level, and that was Alora in Ranger! Yay! And there we go, we got the Crystal Shard. Which we can't do anything with until later on. So for now, we're just gonna keep a hold of it. Well, that was definitely helpful. But that's all there is. That's all she wrote, so let's get the hell out of here. Trying to not burp there. Oops. Ugh, that'd be rude of me. No! <sighs> what? Agitated that we came back? Whoa. <laughs> that was a bit glitchy right there. That's okay. That's all well and dandy, but now is a good time as any to end it here. So, I've been the Northern Star Dragon, and I shall see you in the next video. Hopefully with a little bit more action, because, well, there... 
wasn't all that much to be had. Well, I guess considering that we had the chandelier of ancestry, I guess that was a little bit of action. But anyways, have a good one.